Hello students, welcome to the new session of the cardiovascular physiology. In this lecture, we will see about the cardiac cycle. Now, what is the definition of cardiac cycle? There are the cyclical changes which are taking place in the heart from beat to beat. That means from one heartbeat to next heartbeat, how is the, what are the pressure and volume changes that are taking place in the atria, what are the pressure and volume changes that are taking place in the ventricle. All this is together is just called as the cardiac cycle. How much is the normal duration of the cardiac cycle? So, we know that. How much is the normal heart rate? If we take the normal heart rate as 72, then the duration of the cardiac cycle will be 60 divided by 72. That means it is equal to 0.8 second. How much is the duration of the systole and diastole in that? We can divide it into atrial systole and atrial diastole. We can divide it into atrial ventricular systole and the ventricular diastole. So, the vent atrial systole lasts for about 0.1 second and atrial diastole lasts for about 0.7 second. So that comes to together, the atrial events comes to together about 0.8 second. Whereas for the ventricular one, the ventricular systole will last for 0.3 second and ventricular diastole will last for 0.5 seconds. So that is again equal to 0.8 second. Now, what are the events or what are the phases in the cardiac cycle? So, we can divide it into atrial events and the ventricular events. So, first, the action potential has started in the SA node. It will spread to atria and because of the spread of the action potential, the atria will contract. So, we can call it as the atrial systole. Now, the atrial systole will cause pumping of the blood from the atria into the ventricle. But before the atrial systole has begun, the blood was passively moving from atria into the ventricle since the atrioventricular wall were open. So, atrial systole as such will contribute only about 25% of the end diastolic volume. Rest of the blood has passively already fed, already went or already filled the ventricle. So, therefore, atrial systole as such mechanically is not important, but the atrial systole is important in such a way that when the action potential spreads into the atria then only it can go to the AV node and then the ventricle. After the atrial systole, the atria will go in a state of diastole. That means it will go in a state of relaxation. And at this time, the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, even the pulmonary veins, they will be filling the atria. Now, coming to the most important, the ventricular events. So, after a delay about 0.1 second, the action potential now spread into the bundle of his and then rapidly it will spread to both the ventricles. And now, because of the spread of this action potential, the ventricles, both the ventricles will start contracting. So, we will start with the first phase that is ventricular systole. So, ventricular systole is again divided, subdivided into number of phases. So, as soon as the ventricle will start contracting, now what was the picture before the vent ventricle has start contracting? The semilunar walls, the aortic walls and the pulmonary walls, they are in a closed state. Whereas the AV walls, atrioventricular walls, that is the mitral and the tricuspid wall, they are in a open state. Now the ventricle has started contracting. Because of the contraction of the ventricle, what will happen now? The pressure inside the ventricle will go on increasing. So, once the pressure will go on increasing, the blood will try to regurgitate back or the blood will try to flow back into the atria because the atrioventricular walls are open. But this regurgitation of the some blood into the atria will cause closure of the AV walls. So, what has happened now? The AV walls, they have closed now once the atrioventricular has started contracting. And now, the, what is the situation of the ventricle now? The AV walls, they have closed now. Seminolar walls, they are already closed now. And the ventricle is contracting as a closed cavity. So, if the ventricle is contracting as a closed cavity, there will be no change in the volume. The end diastolic volume, which is about 120 ml, it will remain constant. But the pressure, since the ventricle is contracting as a closed cavity, the pressure will rapidly increase. This phase where the ventricle is contracting as a closed cavity, the first phase of the ventricular systole is called as isovolumetric contraction phase. What do you mean by iso? Same. Volume will remain same. So, isovolumetric contraction phase. What is What will happen in this phase? The volume will remain constant. That is about the end diastolic volume. But the pressure will tremendously increase. 
and now what is the aim of this phase the pressure should increase so much that the the pressure should be become become more than that of outer or in the pulmonary trunk so if you take an example for the left ventricle the seminuna walls are closed because the pressure inside the aorta is more than that of the ventricle so if now that the ventricular pressure becomes more than that of the aorta it is going to cause the opening of the seminuna walls now and blood will flow from the ventricle into the aorta so what is the aim of the isovolumetric phase the aim of the isovolumetric phase is to increase the pressure in the ventricle more than that of the either aorta or the pulmonary trunk so that the seminuna walls can open so if i take about the pressure change in the left ventricle how much the pressure would increase the pressure would increase in this phase the pressure would increase from 0 mm of hg to more than 80 mm of hg so it will go beyond 80 so once it reaches just beyond 80 now the seminuna walls will open now the next phase will begin so what will happen in the next phase rapidly the blood from the ventricle will go into the aorta this is called as ejection phase so initially the pressure inside the ventricle will be too high the ventricle is in the state of contraction so the rapidly the blood will be ejected out so this phase is again subdivided into rapid ejection phase and the later on it is divided into slow ejection phase what will happen in the rapid ejection phase the ventricular pressure will go on increasing it can go up till 120 mm of hg or 130 mm of hg and then afterwards when the blood has been ejected out into the aorta now the aortic pressure will go on increasing whereas the ventricular pressure will go on depleting so this phase the later half is called as the slow ejection phase so next phase is the ejection phase of the systole so here the systole will end now ventricular systole what are the pressure and volume changes in this phase now the volume of the ventricle let's say the left ventricle the volume stroke volume has been ejected out so out of about 120 ml the that is that is the 70 ml has been ejected out that is the stroke volume 50 ml will remain in the heart of the ventricle so the stroke volume that will be ejected out then what is the pressure change pressure from here it can increase to 120 and again it will come back to 80 or it will start depleting and but what will happen to the pressure inside the aorta now the pressure inside the aorta it can go from 80 normally the pressure inside the aorta is 120 by 80 so 80 is the diastolic blood pressure but this is the time of the systole so the pressure will again it can increase to 120 mm of hg it will increase to because of the filling of the blood now so with this the ventricular systole phase will end but now the ventricular diastole will start you have to remember that the aorta is an elastic artery so what is the function of the elastic artery whenever the blood is put in that it will be it is stretch and into the sponsorous stretch now it will contract again so now what will happen the vent the aorta will start contracting because of the contraction of the aorta the pressure inside the aorta it is it will go on increasing and now when the pressure inside the aorta is more pressure inside the ventricle is less now the backward flow will start because of this backward flow now there is sudden closure of the seminuna walls so this phase initial phase of the diastole when there is a backward flow from the aorta into the ventricle this is called as proto diastole so what happens in the proto diastole slight regurgitation of the blood from the aorta into the ventricle and because of that there is a closure of the at the end of this phase there is a closure of the seminuna walls and now again the ventricle the mitral and the tricuspid wall they are already closed and even the seminuna walls will close now and now the ventricle will relax as a closed cavity so this phase is called as isovolumetric relaxation phase but what has happened in this phase now it is ventricle is relaxing so what will happen to the pressure the pressure will suddenly fall since both the walls are closed now there is no change in the volume so the volume will remain same 50 ml whereas the pressure will rapidly decrease even it can come to about 0 mm of hg so what will be the aim of this phase the aim of this phase will be to decrease the pressure to such a level that the mitral wall and the tricuspid wall they open 
because when the pressure inside the atria will be more than that of the pressure inside the ventricle then only the mitral and tricuspid valve will open so what happens at the end of the isovolumetric contraction phase the opening of mi mitral and tricuspid valve or av valves and now up till this time the mitral and tricuspid valve were in the closed state so lot of blood has been accumulated in the atria from the superior vena cava inferior vena cava as well as from the pulmonary veins so as soon as the mitral and tricuspid valve they open rapidly blood will rush from the atria into the ventricle this phase is called as rapid filling phase so what happens in rapid filling phase the ventricle is filled with the blood from the atria and the volume of the the ventricular blood will suddenly increase rapid filling phase will be followed by a slow filling phase or which is called as the period of diastasis that means where passively the blood is coming from superior vena cava inferior vena cava it's going to the atria and from atria it is going to the ventricle so this is the passive flow of the blood that will occur so this is called as period of diastasis and up till this time now the next action potential will start and it will go it will spread over the atria and it will start the atrial contraction so but at that time the ventricle will be in a state of diastole so this last rapid filling phase or the atrial systole which is going to cause more filling about 25% of the filling of the ventricle is called as last rapid filling phase which coincides with the atrial systole whenever it comes to about the pressure changes in the right ventricle the pressure changes in the right ventricle will be less as compared to that of the left ventricle uh, but it will be the similar volume changes will be the similar to that of the right ventricle as a, and the left ventricle so these are the phases of the cardiac cycle now coming to the heart sounds normally we know about the two heart sounds we will call it as s1 and s2 s1 is also called as lump and this is the dub sound what is the cause of the production of the heart sound the heart sounds are produced because of the turbulence created when the turbulence created sudden closure of the valves now before that is when the isovolumetric contraction phase before the isovolumetric contraction phase what has happened the ventricle was in a phase was started contracting the pressure will increase and there will be some regurgitation of the blood from the ventricle into the atria but this regurgitation will be immediately blocked by closure of the av valves the sudden closure of the av valves will cause regurgitation or turbulence that is created turbulence is created into the ventricle and this because of this sudden closure of the av valves will produce which sound s1 sound or l that is lump sound what is the peculiarity of this sound this is low frequency soft sound next we have got the dub sound or the we have dub sound or the s2 sound what is the cause of this sound sudden closure of the seminonal valves now when this occurs this will occur be just before the isovolumetric relaxation phase so a multiple choice question can be asked that s2 sound or the second heart sound is produced at the beginning of which phase or at the end of which phase so you should be able to write that it is at produced at the end of the protodiastole or it is produced at the beginning of the isovolumetric relaxation phase the basic cause of the closure of the seminonal valves is that the elastic aorta because of the elastic aorta the pressure in the elastic aorta that is increased and because of that there is a backward flow same principle remains same with the pulmonary trunk but as i have told you the pressure changes in the ventricle or the pressure changes in the left ventricle and the aorta are much more higher than that of the pulmonary trunk so the backward pressure or the pressure that is generated in the pulmonary trunk will also be less compared to that of the ventricle if the backward pressure is less or the this the closure of the valves will be slowly a uh, little delayed pulmonary valves compared to that of the aortic valves aortic valves will close fast compared to that of the pulmonary valves because the pressure in the aorta is more than that of the pulmonary trunk this slight delay in the closure of the pulmonary valve will produce what is called as splitting of the second heart sound so this is called as physiological splitting of the second heart sound this is pathologically also important it can it can be aggravated in some condition it it becomes reverse in some conditions now 
Sometimes we also hear about the other sounds which are called as S3 and S4 sounds. Again, these are normally not audible but if the viscosity of the blood is less or in case of anemia, these sounds can become prominent. This is again because of the turbulence that is created. S3 sound is because of the rapid inflow phase or rapid filling phase. As soon as the AV walls they open, lot of blood has been accumulated in the atria and as soon as the AV walls open, the blood will rush into the ventricle. And again, this can create a turbulence and that will, that will produce the S3 sound. What is the cause of S4 sound? It is the atrial systole. If atrial systole, uh, more amount of blood enters into the ventricle and there if the turbulence is generated to produce a sound, then that sound will be called as S4 sound. So what is the cause of S4 sound? It is atrial systole. What is our last rapid filling phase? And what is the cause of S3 sound? The rapid filling phase. In short, we will see about the murmurs and thrills. Apart from this heart sound, if any other abnormal sounds they are heard, they are called as murmurs. And these murmurs are useful to diagnose some of the conditions. So what is the definition of murmur? The abnormal heart sound. Murmurs and thrill. What is thrill? A palpable murmur is called as thrill. Now again, what causes the generation of the abnormal sound? the turbulence that is created. The turbulence the, that is created in some abnormal situation such as stenosis or regurgitation of the wall. Now first try to understand what the concept of stenosis and regurgitation. What is stenosis? Stenosis is a condition in which the wall does not open completely when it should open. To give an example, a mitral wall, when it should open? It should open at the time of the diastole and the blood from the atria should flow into the ventricle. If it is not able to open completely, what will happen? The blood in the atria will have more difficulty to pass and the atrial system, especially at the time of atrial system or the rapid filling phase, the blood will try to force down into the ventricle. So this can create a turbulence. A classical example I can give is of the aortic stenosis. Now the pulmonary aortic walls should open completely at the time of the systole, ventricular systole. But if they are not able to open completely, then the condition is called as aortic stenosis. So what will happen? The ventricle will start contract forcefully and blood will rush out to a narrow opening in the aorta, which can cause a sudden blowing murmur, harsh murmur. So this is the because of that, right? But what is regurgitation? Regurgitation we can define as when the heart, when the wall should close completely, it is not able to close. To give an example, the mitral wall should close during ventricular systole. If it does not close, what will happen? Blood when it is going into the out at the same time, it will go also go into the left atrium. So again, it will create a sound. That is that is because of the regurgitation. So what causes what what causes the generation of the murmurs is either the stenosis or the regurgitation. It can the murmurs can be even generated because of the patent ductus arteriosus or even if the foramen oval that is patent. So in that case also the blood flow abnormal blood flow that can also generate the murmur. Basically murmur is because of the turbulent sound that is being produced. In short we will see about the types of murmur and what are the some few conditions in which they are seen. Systolic murmur. Systolic murmur means what? A murmur which is heard in the systole. The common cause is that now during the systole, the ventricle is contracting and the blood should go into the aorta. So if there is an aortic stenosis, it will create a systolic murmur. Or if there is a mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation, it will create a systolic murmur. So the systolic murmur can be there either because of aortic stenosis or mitral regurgitation. Diastolic murmur, a murmur during diastole. What causes the diastolic murmur? Suppose if the mitral walls, they are not open completely and the blood from the atria is not flowing completely into the ventricle. It is flowing to the narrow opening. So the mitral stenosis can produce diastolic murmur. At the same time, if the seminolar walls of the aortic walls, they don't come close completely during the diastole, 
and now what will happen because of that there is some regurgitation of the blood from the aorta into the ventricle this can even create sound so what are the causes of diastolic murmur aortic regurgitation or mitral stenosis a continuous machinery murmur can be heard in the patent ductus arteriosus where the continuously blood is flowing from aorta into the pulmonary trunk right so that can even cause the continuous machinery murmur now we will see about the arterial pulse what is arterial pulse first what is the cause of generation of the pulse whenever the heart whenever the ventricle contracts it will put some amount of the blood the stroke volume is put inside the aorta the aorta is already filled with the blood so what the aorta will do a column of the blood which was already filled in the aorta that will be shifted forward that column will already or uh, that column will shift the fluid again blood forward so because of this shifting of the column the vessel will expand the vessel will expand the wave will be generated and the expansion of this wave we can feel it in the form of the pulse so what is the pulse it is because of the wave of expansion which is generated because of the filling of the vessels in already filled vessels right so this is because of the systole and again the filling of the vessels now if i record the pulse that is its uplift and the downward flow that is down lift then i can have this type of graph this pulse is recorded what you can see is that it has got the two limbs we can call these as the anacrotic or ascending limbs and we call it as the catacrotic or descending limbs so there are the two limbs and ascending limbs and the descending limbs there are certain waves which are seen here this is called as percussion wave then this is called as tidal wave this is called as the diacrotic wave and this is the diacrotic notch so what are the causes of this different waves percussion wave is because of the rapid ejection phase percussion wave is occur because of the rapid ejection rapidly the blood is ejected out into the aorta and because of that we get the percussion wave then we have got is the tidal wave this tidal is because of the slow ejection phase and then we have got is the diacrotic notch so after the slow ejection phase what will happen some backward flow and sudden closure of the aortic walls so this sudden closure of the aortic walls will cause the diacrotic notch and then afterwards once the aortic walls they have been closed now the blood will slowly move towards the periphery so this movement of the blood ultimately it is going to cause this diacrotic wave so these are the various type of pulse and we can record the pulse in some even abnormal condition so if if i draw if i record the pulse i can diagnose some of the abnormal conditions related to that as you can see in this slide now a picture that is called as water hammer pulse which will rapidly rise and rapidly fall this can be seen in aortic regurgitation because in aortic regurgitation the end diastolic volume will increase because the blood is regurgitating at the same the same time the stroke volume is also increase so if the stroke volume has increased there will be rapid ascent that is the ascending limb but since the blood is regurgitating trending back the resistance as such will be decreased and there will be sudden fall in the pressure so you will get the rapid increase and the rapid fall the it is called as water hammer pulse then we have got in aortic stenosis we get the anacrotic pulse what will happen in aortic stenosis very less amount of the blood that will be ejected out into the aorta so overall the amplitude of the pulse, that this pulse that will decrease and the smaller waves that will be recorded so this is called as the anacrotic pulse then we have got is the pulses alternus that is seen in myocardial infarction what happens a strong pulse then followed by a weak pulse this is called as pulses alternus what is the cause of this pulse myocardial infarction the heart has become weak so the one contraction might be strong enough but the next contraction will not be that much strong again the heart recovers and again it causes more forceful contraction so one strong contraction then followed by a feeble contraction so this causes the pulses alternus bispherian pulse is combined of aortic stenosis and regurgitation so we'll get a combination of the tall pulse as well as the short pulse that's will really. pulse is paradoxical normally what should happen during inspiration 
the heart rate should increase. But if the pulse disappears at the end of deep inspiration, this is called as pulses paradoxicus. The, in, the normal sinus arrhythmia that will disappear. So this is this can be seen in pericardial effusion. So pulses paradoxicus can be diagnosis of the pericardial effusion. So with this we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you.